Look at this. We can use pattern blocks for fractions. One yellow one is the same as two trapezoids or trapeziums. It's also the same as three rhombuses and it's the same as six triangles. So what is a red worth? What is a blue worth? And what is a green worth? Fractions now, and decimals. It may help to view our video on how to convert fractions, decimals and percentages before starting. Consider a question like this. We need to order these in ascending order. This means from smallest to biggest. However, because they all have different denominators, we cannot currently compare them. We could convert them all to decimals, but dividing by large denominators can be tricky without a calculator. What we can do is look for a common denominator, a number that is a multiple of all four denominators. The lowest common multiple of our numbers is 30, so we will look to find equivalent fractions with a denominator of 30. As 13 over 30 already has a denominator of 30, we do not need to change it. Can you see how we can change the other three? To find the equivalent fraction for 7 over 10, we need to see how many 10s there are in 30. 30 divided by 10 is 3, so each value in the fraction needs to be made three times larger. Can you work out the equivalent fractions for the other two? Pause the video and have a go. We apply the same process for the other two. There are six fives in 30, so we multiply the numerator three by six, giving us 18 over 30. As there are five sixes in 30, we multiply the other numerator, four, by five, giving us 20 over 30. We can then order by comparing the numerators from smallest to largest, then convert them back to their original form. How to change an improper fraction to a mixed number. Proper fractions look like this. The numerator, the top number, is always less than the denominator. We're used to seeing this kind of fraction. But check out the improper fraction. It's top heavy. The numerator is greater than the denominator. We have to make sense out of this. 6 over 4 means 6 quarters. 4 quarters is 1 whole. And we have 2 quarters left over. So, 6 over 4 equals 1 and 2 quarters. We could do these problems using diagrams like I just showed you, but if we use math, we can work them out much faster. Let's think. 7 over 2 means 7 halves. And it also means 7 divided by 2. When we're changing an improper fraction to a mixed number, this is the fastest way to work with it. Using division, 7 divided by 2. Well, 3 2's are 6, and there's a remainder of 1. Let's do that again. How many 2's in 7? 3 2's are 6, remainder 1. Put that over the original denominator of 2, and we're done. And proving it using a diagram, 7 halves is 3 wholes and 1 half. OK, now we've proved the method works, it's time to do some examples. Let's do this one. 8 over 3. How many 3's in 8? 2 3's are 6. Remainder 2. Use the original denominator. We're done. 14 divided by 5. How many 5's in 14? 2 5's are 10. Remainder 4. Use the original denominator. We're done. Last one. 18 over 7. How many 7s in 18? 2 7s are 14. Remainder 4. Use the original denominator. We're done. How to change a mixed number to an improper fraction. You've got to know how to do this when you're doing fractions. Let me walk you through how to make sense of it so you can do it too. Here's a mixed number. You might also hear this thing called a mixed numeral or a mixed fraction. Different names, but they all mean the same thing. Every mixed number contains a whole number part and a fractional part. 
Here we've got two and two thirds, that's two whole ones, and the fractional part is two thirds. When we change between a mixed number and an improper fraction, we're saying how many parts there are in total, and we're giving that information in the form of a fraction. The denominator tells us how many parts are in each whole. A denominator of three means that each whole has three parts, and we have two wholes. This fractional part tells us that we have two parts out of three. We can see all our parts in this diagram. How many parts have we got? There are two wholes, so that's two lots of three, six, plus two more parts, that's eight. And we keep the same denominator because this is still parts out of three. So we put the total number of parts, that's eight, over our denominator of three. And there's your improper fraction. We can also do this work without using a diagram. Let's take another example, four and a half. Each whole is worth two because our denominator is two. I have four holes, so that means I have four lots of two, or four times two, that's eight. And I have another part here to add in from the numerator of one. So eight plus one is nine. That's our number of parts, so that's our numerator. I use the same denominator we started with, two, and I'm done. Four and a half is the same as nine over two. And I can use a diagram to prove it. Four holes. Each hole is worth two parts, plus one more part out of two. That's nine parts out of two. It's the same answer. Five and three quarters. This is five holes. Each hole is worth four parts, as the denominator tells us. So we say, five times four is 20. Add the remaining three, that's 23 parts. Put that back over our denominator of four, done. Six and two thirds, six holes. Each hole is worth three parts. So six times three is 18. Add the remaining two, that's 20 parts. Put that back over the denominator of three, done. Last one, eight and three fifths, eight holes. Each hole is worth five parts, so eight times five is 40, plus the remaining three, that's 43. Put that back over the denominator of five, done. So when you're changing a mixed number to an improper fraction, you take the whole number and you multiply it by the denominator, and then you add the numerator, and that's your total number of parts. It's your new numerator. Put it over the old denominator, and you're all done. And with a bit of practice.